So today, um, in fluids, we're going to be talking about, we're going to cover a bit more of turbulent flow, okay? And uh, the specific thing we're going to cover this session is called minor losses, okay? Uh, but what I thought I'd do to start with is uh, we just review what we covered last week, okay? Because I think um, some of you are having trouble finding the friction factor from the Moody diagram, okay? And, uh, and then we're going to cover minor losses, which is the new thing this week. And then we've got an example to go through. Okay, so we know that um, when we've got flow running through a pipe, okay, and in, under certain conditions, those are called turbulent conditions, we get a pressure drop, okay, and that's due to the shear stress in the, um, in the pipe, okay, that's this, uh, that's this tor value here, okay, due to those shear stress. Um, we know Bernoulli's equation, well, we've got Bernoulli's equation here, okay, you've got, obviously, the uh, static, dynamic, and hydrostatic pressures on both sides at point 0.1 and point 0.2, but because P1 and P2 are different, okay, um, we account for that with this term delta P, which is the pressure drop, okay, which is that term there. Now, one of the things I didn't tell you last week that I should have perhaps told you is when you've got a pump in this system, okay, you have to have an extra term in the Bernoulli's equation to be able to solve the problem, okay. And so when you've got a pump, you've got obviously dynamic, sta uh, sorry, static, dynamic and hydrostatic pressures on both sides, okay? And there's our loss term, okay? Delta P, okay? Notice I've got a subscript, subscript L, which denotes the fact it's a loss. Okay, but I've also got this term here, which is the pressure rise due to the pump, okay? And so let's assume we had a, a horizontal pipe, okay? Uh, and the, it's, it comes from atmosphere and it goes to atmosphere, okay? So P1 and P2 are the same, they, they drop out. The pipe doesn't change diameter, so C1 and C2 are the same, they drop out, okay? It's horizontal, so Z1 and Z2 are the same, they drop out. Then you end up with delta PP on one side, the pump, and the pressure loss on the other side, which is the loss, okay? And so you can imagine a big, long pipeline pumping gas or, or a fluid of some description across Russia. Um, then, of course, then you've got, a, you know, the pump has got a overcome the loss, okay? Because all these other terms are the same for both sides. And but that delta PP term, whenever you've got a problem with a pump, you don't forget that delta PP term because it will help in terms of solving the problem. Okay, so we, we covered last week turbulent flow and we came up with the equation for pressure drop as the friction factor times by the length divided by the diameter times by the dynamic pressure, okay? Now, the generally, length and diameter we know, as we, uh, we also tend to know the flow rate, so we can work out what the C value is, okay? But this F term is the thing we have to try and work out, what F is, okay? And we use the thing called the Moody chart for that, okay? And the Moody chart, you've all got a copy of in your books, okay? And it looks a little bit like this. And in big, it looks a bit more like this. Okay, and so we've got our laminar region up here, our critical region, which is between two and 3,000 Reynolds number. Okay. We know that less than 2,000, we're generally dealing with laminar flow. Above 3,000, we're generally dealing with turbulent flow. Between the two, it's a bit more tricky. Okay. And then above 3,000 for the Reynolds number, we've got two regions here. We've got a, a zone where it's transitioning between laminar and turbulent flow, okay? And we've got an area of complete turbulence. And we know that in the transition region, okay, below the dotted line, we need both the Reynolds number, okay, and the relative roughness to determine what the friction factor is, okay? Above the dotted line, we can see that these lines, okay, for relative roughness are straight, okay? So it doesn't matter what the Reynolds number is generally, okay? So we could pick a, you know, if we had a relative roughness of 0 0.05, it doesn't matter whether your Reynolds number is up here or all the way over here. It's about the same value. It doesn't change, okay? So this is an area of complete turbulence, and for that we don't need to know the Reynolds number, but we do need to know the relative roughness. Now what I thought we'd do 
Okay, to give you a little bit of practice, I'll run through a, a couple of examples, okay? And then we'll, we'll, uh, you can work in pairs to come up with some solutions yourself, okay? So the process generally follows, you determine your Reynolds number, okay? You determine your relative roughness. What you do is you pick off your Reynolds number, okay? So let's say I'm about 1 times 10 to the 6, okay? You pick off your relative roughness, well that's going to be one of these lines, let's say I choose this one. And where those lines intersect, you read directly across horizontally to pick off your friction factor, okay? So the example, we've got um, 3 times 10 to the 4 for the Reynolds number, okay? So that's, we know 3 times 10 to the 4, well this is 1 times 10 to the 4 here, okay? So we've got 2, 3 times 10 to the 4, so there's our Reynolds number, okay? And we've got a relative roughness of 0 0.01, okay? So that's here. And so what you do is you read up here, okay, so we know we're around here somewhere, okay, and we read along this line until we get that cross, okay, so that's the point of intersection, and from there you read directly across, which gives us the uh, um, friction factor of 0 0.04, okay, is that easy to understand? Okay, so there's my arrow, there's the arrow that side, that's where it is. <coughs> and it gives us a friction factor of 0 0.04. Another example, 4 times 10 to the 6, okay. Well, this here is 1 times 10 to the 6. That's 1 times 10 to the 6. So we know that's 2, 3, there's 4, okay. So that's where we are. And it says a uh, relative roughness of 0 0.03, okay. So 0 0.003, so we know... We're somewhere between these two, so I reckon we're about there, okay? And so I read up here, I'm going to just draw a line down that line there, okay? I read across from here, let's say we're about there, okay? And then from there, we read across to find out the friction factor at that point there, which in this case is going to be, that's going to be F 0 0.026, I'd say. Okay, so we do those things. So we've got relative, relative Reynolds number of 4 times 10 to the, 10 to the 6. We've got a relative roughness of uh, 0 0.003, okay? That's where they cross. You read across and you get the friction factor, which appears to be just there, okay? And that, if you look at the scale, okay, each of these divisions on this side between 0 0.02 and 0 0.03 is 0 0.002, okay? So that's... That's 022, 024, 026, which is where that comes from. We know with turbulent flow problems there are three types, okay? The first type is very simple. Find the pressure drop. You just use the standard equation. You plug in the numbers and out pops your answer, okay? Very simple. And the standard equation we know is uh, delta P equals F L upon D times by one half rho c squared, okay? Simple. Second type of problem is where you've got to try and work out what the flow rate is. Now, because you don't know what the flow rate is, you don't know what the c value is, your velocity, okay, flow velocity. And that's a problem because you can't work out your Reynolds number if you don't have the velocity. We know that Reynolds number is rho times c times d divided by mu, okay? C, if we don't know that, we, we can't work out what the Reynolds number is. And so what we have to do is we have to assume that the flow is fully turbulent, okay? As we said, in the fully turbulent zone of the Moody chart, you don't need to worry too much about uh, what your relative roughness, sorry, what your Reynolds number is, okay? So you assume full turbulence, and you then determine the value for C, you recalculate the Reynolds number, and you go around the loop to iterate until you get an answer that, where C doesn't change significantly, and that's your answer, okay? A type 3 problem is we don't know the, the pipe diameter, okay? You've got to try and determine it. And if you don't know the diameter, not only can you not work out the Reynolds number, but you also cannot work out the relative roughness, okay? And so what you need to do is you need to guess a value of F equals 0 0.03, which is more or less slap bang in the middle of the chart, okay? You work out D from that, okay? And you go around the loop again, um, determining more and more values of D until D doesn't change significantly, and there's your pipe diameter. There are the three types of problems.